Intro Chemistry Experiments Stoichiometry. Now stoichiometry in chemical reactions means that chemicals combine and are produced in fixed quantities, that is, in whole number ratios. Let's briefly consider the stoichiometry of the Haber process, the industrial preparation of ammonia. The balanced chemical equation shows that three moles of hydrogen react with one mole of nitrogen. The coefficient of one is not written in balanced chemical equations, producing two moles of ammonia. And this equation is balanced in terms of mass. You can see that the same number of hydrogen atoms are present on both sides of the equation, six on the left and two times three is six on the right. Likewise, the same number of nitrogen atoms are present on the left and right. When we write chemical equations, we write the formulas of the reactants, the chemicals that react together, so often we call them reagents. We write those on the left-hand side of the arrow. On the right-hand side, we write the formulas of the products. In this experiment, we're going to look at the stoichiometry of the reaction between sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, that's ordinary baking soda, reacting with dilute hydrochloric acid, HCl. Here's the balanced chemical equation. One mole of sodium bicarbonate, AQ stands for aqueous, means dissolved in water, reacts with one mole of HCl, again dissolved in water, producing one mole of sodium chloride, aqueous, and one mole of carbon dioxide, G stands for gas, and one mole of water in liquid form, L stands for liquid. Now we'll make sure that we add excess HCl to ensure that all of the sodium bicarbonate is reacted and we're left then only with sodium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water and a little excess HCl. Now we'll heat this up and the heating will of course drive off the carbon dioxide gas. The water will be boiled off and the small excess of HCl will also be boiled off so we'll only have sodium chloride left will be heating near 100 degrees Celsius, so we don't have to be concerned about the sodium chloride decomposing. Notice that it melts at 801 Celsius and it boils at 1465. It certainly will not decompose. Let's take a look at this reaction. So we'll need the mass of a clean, dry 100 mil beaker. 87.22 grams, you want to record that mass. So I tear or zero the balance. I'm going to add sodium bicarbonate. Two to two and a half grams. You don't actually need a spatula for a powder. You can just tap it as I'm doing here. You want to record the mass of sodium bicarbonate as well. That's 2.5 seven grams. I'm going to wet down the sides of the beaker with a stream of distilled water. You don't have to dissolve all the sodium bicarbonate. We'll just have a, a wet slurry of sodium bicarbonate and water. Next I'm adding a pH indicator, methyl orange. Now methyl orange is yellow at a pH greater than 4.4. It's orange between 4.4 and 3.2 and it's red when the pH is less than 3.2. Now sodium bicarbonate is a base and a mixture of sodium bicarbonate and water has a pH of 8.4. So the purpose of the indicator is to ensure that we have enough HCl added to neutralize all the sodium bicarbonate. When we've done that, the indicator will turn red, showing that it's distinctly acidic and there's no sodium bicarbonate remaining.
yellow color, indicative of a base. Here's 3 molar HCl. I'm going to add 12 mils. Should be in excess, enough to neutralize all the sodium bicarbonate. I'm going to add it a little bit at a time because it does effervesce quite a bit and I don't want to lose the material. Give my arm, I'm reaching around the camera. As HCl is added, there's a large volume of CO2 gas that's being released. It's effervescing. And we see the localized red color formation as the acid hits the indicator. But when you mix it, the color reverts to yellow, indicating that sodium bicarbonate is still present in excess. As we get closer to the end point, the red color will persist longer and longer. When we reach the end point, then the solution should stay red. Looks like we're just about there. staying red, so there's the last of the HCl. It's present in excess. All our sodium bicarbonate should be completely converted to sodium chloride, water, and CO2 at this point. I'll rinse down the sides of the beaker and the bottom of the watch glass to make sure everything gets into the beaker. I'm going to heat this at a fairly high temperature to boil down the water. And I'll have to remove that watch glass to make sure that the water can, in fact, boil out. Now we just have to wait for a bit. Been heating a few minutes. Now I'm approaching the end point. Not much water left. I have to be careful here. Here it's starting to spatter. If any of the solids hop out of the beaker, we lose some, so I'll need to take that off the hot plate and let that cool off a bit before heating it some more. So here it's been heated for some time now, and let's get our first mass. That white plate is a fiberglass plate, and so it just protects the balance from the hot beaker. Here's our first mass, 89.64 grams, 63 grams. I'm going to heat that some more, we'll get a second mass, 89.64 need to heat this until all the water is driven off lost a bit more, 89.44 grams. Here's our third mass now, after more time. 89.30 grams. Now I've heated this quite a long time before I take this final and fourth reading. 89.06 grams. So we have our data. Let's go back to the lab procedure and look at the calculations. I'm going to examine the calculations by looking at a different reaction and then you can apply it to the reaction we just studied. In this case, potassium hydroxide is a strong base and it reacts completely with nitric acid, a strong acid. Nitric acid is added in excess. Potassium hydroxide will be yield limiting. That means it determines the amount of product formed. The products will be potassium nitrate and water. 
In this example, we're adding 2.00 grams of potassium hydroxide. How many moles is that? Divide it by the molar mass. 56.11 grams per mole gives us 0 0.0356 moles of KOH. Look at the calculations. Just follow the units. Grams divided by grams per mole gives us moles. And the stoichiometry of the reaction shows us that one mole of KOH produces one mole of potassium nitrate. And therefore, 0 0.0356 moles of KOH will produce 0 0.0356 moles of potassium nitrate. How many grams is that? We multiply the number of moles by the molar mass in grams per mole, and it gives us the theoretical yield in grams. Again, follow the units. 0356 moles of KNO3 times the molar mass in grams per mole. Moles will cancel, giving us 3.60 grams of potassium nitrate. That is the theoretical yield, and that's the number that comes up here. This is not your actual yield, this is theoretical. Just write your actual yield down below. In this case, the experimental yield of the product, the actual yield, 3.31 grams. And from this, calculate the percentage yield and the percentage error. Now the percentage yield is simply the experimental or actual divided by theoretical or true times 100%. So we actually measured 3.31 grams. Theoretically, we should have had 3.6. We're a little bit shy. Times 100%, we get a 92% yield. The percentage error is the measured or experimental value minus the true value or theoretical value divided by theoretical value times 100. In this example, 3.31 grams was actually measured subtract 3.60 theoretical divided by 3.60 theoretical times 100 negative 8.1 percent it's negative because you measured less than we sh should have found anytime you measure less than you should have got that would be a negative error and in such cases be sure to include the negative sign if on the other hand you measured more than is possible more than theoretical then put positive or leave it without a sign now students have often asked me is it experimental minus true or is it true minus experimental and the problem there is people are memorizing a formula but just think about it if you measure more than you're supposed to have that would be a positive error if you're measuring less than you're supposed to have that would be a negative error so it must be experimental minus true. Students sometimes also ask, well, do, do I divide by the measured or divide by the true? And once again, don't rely on memory. Think of what it means. When we calculate percentage error, we want to compare the accuracy, see how close or how far we are to the true value. Who cares how far or close we are to the incorrect value? What does that even mean? We want to compare to the true value, so you must divide by the true value. There are also three questions for you to answer. When done correctly, the theoretical mass of sodium chloride remaining in the beaker at the end of the procedure is less than the mass of sodium bicarbonate you started with. Does that make sense? Is it correct? Explain the difference. Question number two. We already discussed the purpose of the indicator, but why do we add the indicator before we begin the evaporation step? Why don't we just add it at the end? Think of what would happen if we hadn't added enough HCl and we had some sodium bicarbonate left and then we heated it. Would it remain in the beaker? What would happen? And finally, how would your results be affected if the residue in the beaker wasn't completely dry? So you can answer those three questions as part of your lab report.
please present your calculations in exactly the same sequence as I'm showing them here and follow the same format as given in the previous example. For ease, I wrote the numbers in to start you off. 87.22 grams was the mass of the empty beaker. 2.57 grams was the mass of sodium bicarbonate added. 89.31, well that was not our first mass, but it was our, probably our third mass. It was an intermediate mass, which we're not going to use in our calculation. We use our final mass. Here it says second, but it was actually our fourth. Fourth and final mass, 89.06 grams. By subtracting the final mass and the initial weight of the beaker will get the actual mass of sodium chloride and from that you should be able to calculate the rest as shown here and if you need more space to answer the questions just attach an additional sheet that's it for the experiment on stoichiometry